Hi, this is a second startup tutorial video for the F5e. This one is for users with split throttles only. So that means if you have an X55 or a Thrustmaster Warthog, this is for you. Otherwise, watch my other tutorial video. So, with that said, let's turn on the battery, turn on the left and right generators, turn on the left and right fuel pumps, contact ground crew, connect to air supply, and once they have that up, we're going to activate the air supply. It's connected. Press Apply. Once it's applied, the left RPM will start going up. There it goes. Press and hold the left engine start button for a second. Let it go. Now come down here and press right alt home to crack the throttle to the start position. I'll go ahead and close the canopy with Control C. Now once the left engine is started, I'm going to disconnect the air supply. So go ahead and pull up the ground crew now and just wait. It's going. So we disconnect the air supply. Copy. And this is where the difference is. I've separated my throttle so I can control them separately. I'm going to apply full brakes and throttle up the left engine to 95% RPM. And try not to bump the afterburner. 100% is good. I will now press and hold the right start button for a second. Engine going up. Press right shift home to crack that throttle. It is very important. It remains at this position. That's why you have to have split throttles. If you do not, if you uh, raise it up with your other throttle, it'll uh, actually break the engine. Or, so it happened to me on the one time I forgot to do that. So the left engine's now starting. I can throttle back to left. Excuse me, the right engine has started, so I throttle back to left. And now I continue just as in the other video. So I'm going to set the radar to standby mode, turn on my two uh, dampeners, Turn on chaff and flare. Turn the radio to main. And I'll go ahead and turn on my pitot heat. If I can click it. I do have a center... Actually, I don't have a center line drop tank. I have two wing tanks. So I'll turn on those two fuel pumps. Um, an error I made on my previous videos is cross-feed pump. This allows either engine to run off any gas tank. You don't actually have to enable that. Although I still recommend it typically. And go ahead and turn on the oxygen supply and set it from 100% to normal. I don't know why it goes to 100%. And... turn on the RWR. It'll take a minute to boot up and we'll see a message across the screen. Turn on the IFF to normal. That's so other aircraft can IFF us, not the other way around. This aircraft cannot IFF other aircraft. We have our TAC CAN controls down here. I'm going to leave it off. I'm not going to use it. And then, of course, we have our gun sight up here. I'm going to go ahead and set that for missile mode, which will give us a fixed pipper. Finally, we do spawn with the air brakes out. So I'm going to go ahead and retract those. The air brakes are right there on the throttle. It's um, three position. We have retract, neutral, and extend. It doesn't seem to hurt anything if you just leave them in retract or extend all the time. Um, I haven't noticed any hydraulic problems like that. I'll go ahead and center that. And I think Oh, the backup uh, artificial horizon. I always forget that thing. I'm sure I'm not the only one. And I think that's it. We have our lighting controls down here for both internal and external lights. Um, our warning panel's good. And click the master caution off. It doesn't go off automatically, although I think it maybe it's supposed to. And yeah, that's it. Real quick and simple. 
And it's a hell of a lot quicker than using the uh, ground crew to apply air pressure to both engines. It's much quicker uh, with the split throttles if you have them. Um, I covered it in the previous video, so I'll go ahead and do it here. To taxi, you just crack the throttles open. It's very sensitive. It doesn't. It loves to get moving. And for nose wheel steering, you have to press and hold the button. And if you let go of the button while you're turning, it will maintain that turn no matter what you do with the rudder. So just be aware of that. And you can drain your hydraulic pressure. I have had that on a couple of occasions, although I'm not entirely sure what the um, what causes it. I think it's just too much nose wheel steering. Now when you get ready to take off, you need to jack up the nose wheel. You don't actually have to do this, but it makes taking off a lot easier. And I am very heavily loaded with bombs and rockets, so it's required here. You'll also want to set your flaps from up to automatic. There's two sets of flap controls. You have this on your throttle, and this is up, uh, about half flaps, and then automatic, which will be full, half, or none, depending on airspeed and angle of attack. You also have your manual controls up here, which will be full. This is the thumb switch, and then full up but it defaults to thumb switch so just leave it there most of the time and takeoff is real simple you just run the throttles up and away we go take off the brake and you can see here it's in automatic mode but it does show full flaps and at this speed, we don't need the nose wheel steering. Um, it is very sensitive, so once you're going more than maybe 10 knots, don't use it. Rotate, if we can. We are super heavy. Gear up. And we don't have to mess with the flaps, because they'll retract on their own. Though it might be a minute, because we are so damned heavy. How's that for a bomb truck? Hope this helped. Thanks for watching.